Section 5.2, Chapter 5. There is a special kind of distribution. We call it the binomial probability distributions. Binomial probability distribution is one particular category of discrete probability. In binomial probability distribution, outcome belong to two categories. Examples, acceptable or defective, survive or die. Binomial procedure has four conditions as follows. Fixed number of trials, trials must be independent. Like when you flip a coin, it's either tail or head, or in case of a baby, it's boy or girl. So the trial are completely independent. Outcome is always two category and probability remain the same in all trials. So like in case of flip a coin, it doesn't matter how many times you toss a coin, it's always, there's always a fixed number of trials and also the probability is always 50%. Now, Rolling a dice 60 times is not a binomial because it, ha it has to have two outcomes, not just more than two. Now, this is a binomial formula. Binomial formula is n factorial over n minus x factorial, x factorial probability of success to the power of x, q is always one minus p. And for probability distribution in general, we use this formula before. For a special case, which is a binomial, we don't have to calculate the mean through this formula. Mean could be just n times p. Or if you want to calculate the standard deviation in case of binomial, you don't have to go through this formula. This is the formula to use. This is one example. There is 85% probability the randomly selected that whole know the two either is. So that is your n value. I mean, I'm sorry, that's your p value. Use the binomial probability formula to find the probability of when five adults, so n is five, five adults are randomly selected, exactly three of them know. So x is three, three out of five. So through this formula, you are able to calculate probability of exactly three out of five, believe, in Twitter. So this is how to input the information. Now, <clears throat> it's also easy to use the calculator. To use the calculator, this is a function to use. I mean, second verse, binomial PDF, NPX. Second, and then VARS, V-A-R-S. I'm sorry. Second, VARS. And then you scroll down to <clears throat> binomial PDF. How many trials? N is five. Probability of success is 0.85. You always want to write that as a decimal. X is three. That gives you 0.138, and that's the number that you have here. So you have a choice of using calculator or use the probability formula. We had this problem in the past that we give you we give you two columns in probability distribution. The first column is X. It's in the case of a couple who wants to have two children. And what's the problem if you're having a girl? No girl, one girl, two girl, three girls, and these numbers. Now remember to calculate the mean and the standard deviation for any probability distributions, we are using the formula, mean is sum of x, p, x, and uh, the standard deviation is radical x to p, x minus mean to power of two. Now, 
what we can do is we could use this formula to calculate P of X. So in that case, if we just give you, if we just give you the value of X, and ask you to calculate P of X. So we don't have to give you P of X anymore. If we ask you to calculate these numbers, which are 0 0.125, 0 0.375, 0 0.375, then you could use the formula, binomial formula. Why this is a binomial? Because you're talking about the chart. So it meet all the requirement. The baby is either boy or girl. So there are always two outcome. Now, if you want to calculate a standard deviation and the mean because it's binomial, then we are using this formula. Mean is just n times p. n is 3 times half is 1.5. So you see, rather than going through all this calculation and calculate the mean from the general formula, since this, this is a case of binomial, you could just find it this way. Or a standard deviation is np times q. q is always 1 minus p. So that's how to do it. Instead of going through all this calculation, just in case of binomial, you could use these two formula for mean and standard deviations. So these are the formula to use. This is another example that a coin is tossed four times. See, the coin when you toss is always head or tail, right? So it's binomial because the outcome is always two possibilities, head or tail. So probability of, let's say, head or tail is always 0.5 or half. So you could use the formula for this one to calculate mean and standard deviations. There is also a table at the end of the textbook to calculate, but it's not common anymore because since you have a calculator and a formula, you don't really need to go through this, but if you want to use table A1, table A1 has a column which is X and the column which is five. For instance, in this case, based on Harris poll, 60% of adults. So this, you find the P value from the top, you find the N value, which is five, these are all from table A1. And then X for any of these numbers, then there is a value here. So you could find it through the table, but table is limited. It doesn't really go for every single N or every single X. It's a very, very limitation. So you could either use the table or use the binomial formula or use the calculator, which is the easiest of all. So you show you here that if you use the table, if you already know the P-value, you know x is 3 and n is 5, you have 0.346. This is method of table A1. The second method is use the binomial formula. Or the third one would be this one. All right. These are another example. A coin is tossed three times. Again, the coin is binomial. So you could actually calculate all this possibility through the formula. When you do that, these are all possibilities that when you coin it three times, you always have one of these eight. All three of them are head, the first two head and then tail and so on. So let's say we want to calculate probability that two out of three are heads. So you see that three over eight, because three of these has two head and one tail. That's what they're looking for. They're looking for probability of exactly two head. Which one of these eight has two heads? One, two, three, three out of eight. This one is guess at five multiple choices questions. Find the probability that, so when you want to answer the questions, your answer is, is either correct or wrong. Again, it's a binomial. 
what's the probability that you get three correct out of five? And where do you get half uh, one over five come from? What is the probability of correct one? One over five. When there are five choices, probably if you're coming the correct one is one out of five. Or you could use your calculator. N is five, probably if the upcoming correct answer is one over five or 0.2, and X is three. That's how you come up with 0.05 using the calculator. Now, <clears throat> a survey from teen, teenager research on limited find that 30% of teenage consumers receive their spending money from part-time job. So 30% is the p-value. If five teenagers are selected, n is five, find the probability that at least three, they want you to find the probability of at least three, means at least three means x greater than three all the way to five. So x greater than three means probably x equal three plus probably x equal four, or probably x equal five. So you could actually calculate each of these and then add together to come with this value or on your calculator. If you want to calculate probability x greater than three, you know that is one. See, probability of x greater than three is one, which is 100%, minus this part. Means if, if you take from the 100%, if you take these three out, then that would be x greater than three. The reason we do that because calculator, when you're using CDF, CDF means calculator would estimate the sum from that number less. Like when I put two here, what the calculator does, calculator add all these three numbers and they give you that. And then when you subtract that from one, that would come up with your real answers. So again, this function of CDF means number that you place here it would take that number and lower all the way to the zero. So binomial of CDF 5.32 means probability of x equal two, x equal one, and x equal zero. That's what it means. And here we show you how to do that. This is another formula that, you know, this is another example that it shows you that if you have n, p, and q, you could just use this formula. And remember for significantly high or significantly low, if you want to find the border, if you want to find these two points at the border, you have to add min plus two standard deviation and subtract min two. So that gives you these two numbers. When you have two border points, when we give you a number in the problems, if the number is greater than this, it falls into significantly high. If the number is lower than min minus two standard deviation, means it's significantly low value. And we are using this for one of the homework examples. In general, probability always, if the probability is less than 5% is unusual. So probability, of, probability has to be greater than 5% or 0 0.05. That means it's not unusual. So usual is this. So if the probability is less than 5% is unusual. This is another example that show you that if you want to calculate, see there are 460 numbers, right? If you want to calculate probability of 252, that means you gotta go probability of 252, 253, 254, all the way to 460, and this is almost impossible to do it. So what you do is you just, if you want to calculate probability of x greater than 252, you write it as one minus probability less than 252. Calculator is able to do it when it's less. It means calculator would go all the way from 252 to lower. And when we do the calculations, it's 0 0.02. 0 0.02 is less than 5%, so it is unusual. All right, so now, we start with the problems. The first one is all multiple choice, and the answers are written here. The second one, four, five, or six, I have the solution here for you. That means um, 
first, this one is multiple choice. The number five, multiple choice question. What is the probability of CWW? What's the probability of CWW, WWC, and so on? Here, there are four multiple choice questions. What's the probability of when you answer the first one is correct, this, the second and the third one is wrong. Probability of correct is one out of four, if there are four choices. Probability of wrong is three quarters. So you multiply this, this is 0 0.140625. What's the probability of when you answer the uh, your three questions, the first two are wrong and then is correct? Same thing. What's the probability of the first one is wrong, the middle one, the second question is correct, and the third one is wrong, the same thing. And then in part C, they're saying based on this, what is the probability of getting exactly one correct answer? So what is probability of the other four answers you get, of four questions, you get one wrong, one questions, you come up with the correct answer out of four questions. NPX, four trials, probability of getting correct answer is one out of four. See, if there are two questions, A, B, C, D, when you want to answer, probability of the correct answer is one out of four. Probability of coming with the wrong answer is three out of four. So probability of coming with the correct answer is one out of four or 0.25. This, the number six, the number six problems also is find the probability of X less than four. So in that one, N is six, probability is 0. 0.6. They want us to calculate probability of X less than four. Remember when it's less, calculator CDF is able to do it. But x less than 4, it doesn't say it's equal to 4. It says fewer than 4. So that means you go from 3 all the way to 0. So for the x, you have to put 3, not the 4, because it said 4 is not included. What's the probability of fewer than 4? So CDF is for accumulations. If you want to accumulate all the numbers from that number to the 0, you are using this formula. Number seven, find that exactly six of them. So for that, they want you to calculate for x equals six. Again, the same formula. And for number eight as well, number seven and eight. So they all basically follow the same formula. So it's easier to use your calculator. On this one, Based on the poll, 60% of adults believe in incarnation, so probability is that. Five adults, N is five. And what is the probability of four of them believe in it? X equal four. So in that case, that's how you get it. What's the probability of B? What's the probability of all of them? Means in this case, X is five. That's what you come up with. C, what's the probability of at least four? Again, at least four means probability of four or greater. So that would mean because there is five, right? So it would be probability of x equal four, probability x equal five, which since the calculator is able to do it from that number to zero, x equal four is one minus probability of x less than three. So through the formula, you calculate that and that would give you the answer. In these problems, they want you to calculate mean and standard deviation first, and then find your range. Remember to find the range is mean plus two S and mean minus two S. And then at the end, they have this number 24. They're asking if this 24, is the result of 24 girls is significantly high? The answer is yes, because the range is from 10.8 to 22.2. Remember, any these are the border points. Any number above this is significantly high, and 
any number below is significantly low. So 24 is significantly high. Why? Because it's on the right side of 22.2. Number 11, <clears throat> for this shipment to be accepted, the probability has, to, probability has to be one or none. So you have to calculate probability of x equal one, which is probability of x equal less than you know, equal to one. So probability of x equal one, x equal zero. When you do the calculation, you come up 49.6%. Means the company would accept the shipment if it's 49.6% effective. So the shipment will reject it if it's 50.38 or above. So any shipment that is less than that is acceptable. Above, above that one is rejected. So based on that, then the rest would be all multiple choice questions that you could find the answers on that one. 